Sorceress is one of the easiest and strongest ranged DPS class in the game. She has great mobility through blink and bursting potential with ignition. Due to its skill set and playstyle simplicity, there are many builds and some do not rely on engravings. She can even be viable without any class engravings. However, the endgame min-max builds are something else. It will take NA users at least few years to achieve this. Since I don't have these myself, I received help from my raid friend who is a Sork one trick with many builds. In this video, I will share the endgame playstyle and theory crafted the majority of the sorceresses and min-max 2 builds top 0.2 percentile half. Reason why this video is a little different is because Sorks have many viable builds due to her basic kit being very strong. Let's go over the skills first. We have Blaze and Lightning Vortex. Lightning Vortex and Blaze is used as a synergy skill. As you notice here, this is damage amplification. It provides 6% increased damage to yourself and your party mate. You can level it up to 7, 10, but at minimum 4 is required. You can choose one or the other. For example, if you choose Blaze, it stays for a long time at a very large range. So if you want to enable the synergy skill as long as you can, you can use that one. As for Lightning Vortex, if you put it up to level 7, what happens is you get movement speed. So whichever your preference is, you would choose. Next we have Frost Call. You take Enlightenment, Unstable Rule, and Enhanced Strike. This is for your generic basic Sorcerer's build. At the very end final build, the Instantaneous Cast Sorcerer's uses the Rule Enhancement. But I will explain this particular tripod way later. Next we have Squall. Your regular counter skill, you can put it to level 4. Or if you think you run out of mana, you can put it to level 10 and have a charge MP tripod. Next we have Seraphic Hail. Usually people go Enlightenment for Ignition and Evolved Hail and damage related tripods. The Instantaneous Cast one uses the cooldown, but I will talk about that way later. And we have Rhyme Arrow, same thing. You have the Identity Gauge Filling skill for Ignition or Faster Cooldown for Instantaneous Cast. And then you have the Damage Related Tripod and you have the Damage Related Tripod. Then we have Elegance Touch. Basically, this is a shield skill. People use it, people don't. But the Instantaneous Cast must use this skill due to its mana burning. But that will be talked at the later point of the video. As for now, Keeping at level 1 is fine. If you level it up, you will put it on cooldown, or you will also put it up on gaining additional identity gauge. And we have Esoteric Reaction. You will have it on cooldown, damage related tripod, and damage related tripod. This is your sub DPS skill. You can also put it on the mana recovery if you find yourself running out of mana all the time. So for your main DPS skills, you have Doomsday, you have Explosion, and then you have Punishing Strike. These three are the main DPS skills that most sorcerers use because it does the most damage. And out of the three, Doomsday does the most damage. Going over the tripod and each skills, let's go for Punishing Strike first. If you think you're running out of mana, you would go for the mana one. If you don't, you would go for the larger Explosion. Usually the Ignition Sorcerer does Destruction and Magic Amplification. But as for Instantaneous Cast, you use Unavoidable Fate. So the Ignition one, Lands a little bit different, you cast it, and it does deal damage for a certain amount of time. If you have it on the other one, it creates a line, and the casting is much faster. And for explosion, you have the burn tripod, you have the damage related tripod, and out of the two, you have your amplification or your crit damage. Usually going for the amplification if you're in ignition mode. Last we have Doomsday. Doomsday is one of the best skills that the Sorceress has. We have the Burn Tripod, and then we have the Damage Related Tripod, and then we have the Magic Amplification for Ignition, and choices for Final Strike for people who have a very high crit rate. So for your Awakening, you have Inviscus Might and Apocalypse Call. Most people use Inviscus Might because it does the most damage, but some certain builds use Apocalypse Call, but we'll talk about it later. Let's talk about engravings and builds a little bit. First of all, it is very important to have decent crit chance. Something like Ignition Sorg is heavily reliant because Ignition Mode increases crit chance and crit damage. As for Reflux, it gives cooldown and damage increase. So Reflux needs a just a little bit more support on crit stat just to make it viable. I want to be clear on the crucial basics first. If you're wondering if you should go Ignition or Reflux, the answer is very simple. You can go either of them. The playstyle is almost exactly the same. Let's go over why. Here are the engravings you should have under the radar. Ignition, Reflux, Grudge, Cursed All, Keen Blunt, All Out Attack, Hitmaster, Adrenaline, and Precision Dagger. For all beginning sorks, 
you must have all out attack. It increases your crucial cast speed. If you don't have this, this is your main reason why you're dying. Afterwards, then let's say you got lucky with the ignition engraving loot and got it to level 3 really quickly. This means you have 25% crit rate and 50% crit damage, which is equivalent to 700 crit combat stat in a keen blunt engraving. So you have 700 extra combat points to be distributed either into damage, like spec, or utility, like swiftness. So you'd be very well off with about 1100 total crit and you can put it at rest on spec or swiftness, whichever you like. If you happen to get reflux, however, you will need to fill up that 25% crit rate somewhere else. So you have a choice to either have a precision dagger, which gives about 20% crit chance, or more crit stats up to 1400, and using keen blunt engraving to add the crit damage you miss from ignition. So realistic 3 to 4 level 3 engravings look like this for Sorks. Sorks can be very versatile in builds because you just need good crit chance to back it up. I personally recommend investing into swiftness than spec in the early stage because being slow will result in you dying more often. The build I just talked about is the beginning casting sword. You'll be playing this build for a very long time. Afterwards, the build will have two final paths. I will go over them after going over the playstyle of the casting sword first. So casting sword's playstyle is very simple. You utilize your synergy skill first for extra damage. Then use your gauge generation skills like Rhyme Arrow and Seraphic Hail. Make sure you have enlightening tripods on both of them. And as for Reflux, when you have your Synergy skill on hit, make sure you to use your main 3 DPS skills to provide the maximum amount of damage while the Synergy is active. As for Ignition, however, with a full bar of Ignition ready to go, you need to make sure you land your Synergy skill first, you Ignite, and then you land your 3 main DPS skills. Then you can keep proceeding to use all of the skills before ignition runs out. Also, noticing how my friend does it. You can use your synergy skill after you cast your doomsday because before the doomsday lands, if the synergy is still active, it still lands. So there's a little bit of trick to that as well. The cycle repeats from here. If you happen to have reflux, you don't need to worry about igniting. But if you have ignition, you just need to add ignition in between for additional damage and casting speed. Now let's go over the super fun topic, the final two builds of Sorceress. It is important to understand the early part of the video before going to this topic to understand why these builds exist. Unlike other classes, Sork has two final builds, Reflux Instant Cast and Ignition. Both builds are impossible to achieve in the NA server for now, for at least 6 months. In item level 1445, you can start receiving orange gears. Sork uses the Nightmare set. The set bonus specializes in mana usage. The set will spend 7% additional mana for more damage, which is called the damage phase. However, if you have less than 30% mana, your skill costs less mana, mana regen is increased by a lot, and with up to 45% additional cooldown. You call this the mana burn phase. Until you reach back to full mana pool, you do not change back to damage phase. Keep this in mind before I go over the two builds. Let's go over ignition build first. In ignition build, you go high spec and sub crit or swiftness with precision dagger engravement. This build requires you to cast the meteor twice during one ignition mode. In order to do this, you need swiftness or high cooldown gems. It plays regularly like the endgame sword, but it's min-maxed. There are also tricks like animation cancel and post-ignition. If you ignite right after you cast the meteor falls, the damage is counted as ignition mode, so the goal is to hit doomsday at max damage twice. So an example combination of skills would be doomsday, space or charge skill, Ignition, combination of skills, then Doomsday again. If you cannot cast Doomsday twice during Ignition, it is not min-max enough. Also, you put your tripods into using less mana because you do not want to have less than 30% mana pool because it decreases the damage of your skills for quite some time. Let's go over the Reflux Instant Cast build. Sork is the only few class that can indefinitely keep the cooldown phase, so it is one of the most unique builds in Lost Ark. Since Sorks can overspend the regen the Nightmare set bonus gives, they can keep that 45% cooldown bonus for all of her skills, which results in her casting skills at a very very fast pace. Reflux Instant Cast build uses all cooldown tripods and a mana burning tripod on Frost Call. She also uses the mana shield to decrease mana regen. To clarify, all the tripods I have mentioned needs to be at max level, which it costs a big investment. Just because you're going Reflux and Gerving, it doesn't mean you can instant cast Reflux build, so please don't confuse the two. When the time is right, I can make a detailed build guide about this, but it's too far into the future. So this covers the basics of the Sorceress. I do not want to go into too much detail to confuse people, so I cut out many of the details. 
Just remember you do not need to choose a path for Sorks for now. She is very strong in her own basic kit, so focus on working on strong foundations like crit rates and simple engravings that will help your gameplay like all-out attack. As always, thanks again. Bye!